Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Tesla stock. We have new notes from Alex Potter at Piper Sandler and Adam Jonas of Morgan Stanley. Then we've got an update on Bitcoin, which hit a quarterly low today, so that'll affect Tesla's second quarter results. And we've got some news out of China. Tesla stock flattening out for the week today by finishing up about half a percent to $623.71. That compared to the Nasdaq up eight tenths of a percent. All right, we'll start off here with a new note from Alex Potter. Alex has been on the podcast a few times in the past, so definitely recommend checking those episodes out. But the updated note from Piper Sandler today is forecasting out electric vehicle sales through 2040 globally and by brand. I always really like this kind of stuff because, as I've talked about, I have a really long-term perspective, and sometimes we see analyst notes that are only valuing Tesla on a couple years out, and that's just not going to capture why investors are owning the stock or all the changes that are going to happen in the automotive industry over the next couple of decades. Obviously, any forecast for that kind of time horizon is going to be off, but even the act of having to think through those things is helpful, and the forecast itself puts some numbers around a scenario that could materialize. Anyway, they've gone through brand by brand, region by region to forecast electric vehicle sales through 2040. This is pure BEVs, none of that plug-in hybrid stuff. And headline numbers, they're seeing about two and a quarter million BEVs sold in 2020, so actual market share of about 3%. They forecast that to increase to about 18 million vehicles in 2025, about 18% market share. 45 million vehicles in 2030, about 45% share. 70 million EVs by 2035, 75%. And 81 million by 2040, or 94% share. So taking a look at how they break that down by brand, I think this chart is organized by today's volume levels for total automotive. So you see VW Group, Toyota at the top there, Tesla about 60% of the way down the chart. And we'll start by looking at the 2025 forecast. So again, they're forecasting 18 million total battery electric vehicle sales and about 4.8 million of those being Tesla. Remember, analyst consensus for Tesla for 2025 deliveries is about 2.3 million vehicles right now whereas Tesla's 50% plus stated growth rate gets them to 4 to 5 million vehicles around that time. So Piper Sandler, one of the few, maybe the only firm expecting Tesla to actually be able to achieve that with their forecast here. Compared to their forecast for other brands, that would put Tesla's 2025 deliveries at more than two and a half times the level of second place. They've got Volkswagen delivering about 1.75 million electric vehicles in 2025, or about 16% of Volkswagen's total deliveries. From 2025 to 2030, they have Tesla continuing to lead, 9.3 million forecast for 2030, that's ahead of Volkswagen again in second at 5.5 million. And as we've talked about with Alex previously, that's where they kind of have Tesla sales from a unit perspective peaking, and then declining to 8.8 .8 million in 2035, 8.1 million in 2040, but FSD revenue over that period of time really ramping up. So I did see a couple articles out there today mention that Potter sees Volkswagen as the market share leader. But again, that doesn't happen in the forecast here until after 2035, and also doesn't tell the full story with FSD like Potter's Tesla notes do. More on that in a second, but a couple of other comments looking through the brand forecast here. First off, Toyota, we've been talking about them recently and their refusal to commit to electric vehicles, continuing to pursue and support a diverse powertrain lineup. And Piper Sandler has that not ending super well for them, so only 300,000 EVs delivered in 2025 and just over a million in 2030. So only about a fifth the level of Volkswagen, only about a ninth the level of Tesla, and only good enough for a ninth or 10th slot in terms of EV market share. As EVs become a bigger chunk of global sales, that failure to capture any EV market share drops Toyota's overall market share in the automotive space from around 11% to about 7.5% in this forecast by 2030, and then into 2040, down to just 4% of the total market. These forecasts actually have all legacy automakers losing market share by 2040, but Toyota being affected the most, losing market share to Tesla, the biggest gainer, and other new brands. Based on Toyota's comments around electric vehicles so far directionally, I'd probably have to agree with that. Anyway, as for other Tesla-specific comments in this note, Piper Sandler does note that they still view Tesla as the best way to invest in electric vehicles. They summarize that with eight points, Noting they still assign Tesla with an overweight rating, they think the second half of this year could be choppy for Tesla due to the implementation of several ambitious projects, saying that if factory delays or chip shortages called delivery shortfalls, they would buy any weakness. Recent China worries are another potential source of temporary near-term downside. But by this time in 2022, Tesla should have opened new factories and updated full self-driving software, and they think those developments are going to overwhelm any slash all near-term headwinds. They've still got a $1,200 price target on the stock and note the biggest risks as delays, missed expectations, defects or recalls, supply issues, and EV wariness. Next here, just a quick note from Adam Jonas of Morgan Stanley as well. He shares eight key drivers for Tesla capacity expansion. No changes here either to the rating or to the price target still overweight and a $900 price target. 
So nothing too crazy here, but the eight key drivers that Jonas notes are number one, produce in markets where they want to sell, noting that cars can't ship like most consumer electronics, so there's high benefits to localization. I continue to believe that the market hasn't fully realized the impact of this yet on Tesla's financials. Second point is make each new factory its best factory. We've heard Elon talk about that before. Each factory should be faster and better than the one before. Number three, spread bets across national regimes, noting the impact that overconcentration can have. Number four, help set technology standards in major regions. If you can be a leader that gives you influence, you can help set policy. Number five, diversify out of China. Jonas in general has been relatively bearish on Tesla in China, so no surprise to see him mention that. Number six, battery economics drive expansion. Just noting that vertical integration will lead to battery production being co-located with final assembly. Already what we're seeing Tesla do. Number seven, aggressively reduce price to prevent slash delay encroachment from big tech. Completely makes sense if you can limit the return on investment that competitors could get, they're less likely to enter. And finally, number eight, partnerships are a natural outcrop of the global slash scaled strategy. They're pretty vague on this point, so I don't know, it's kind of a catch-all, but as I've said before, I don't really see Tesla in that supplier type of a role. So yeah, nothing too crazy there, just wanted to go through it for completeness sake. Next here, Bitcoin. So everybody's favorite topic, Bitcoin has dropped again to a new quarterly low. So hitting a low today of about $28,800 per Bitcoin. As we've discussed before, and as Tesla notes in their quarterly financials, they determine the fair value of Bitcoin based on the lowest price that it traded at during the quarter. And if that value is lower than what they recognized their Bitcoin assets at last quarter, which is called the carrying value, then Tesla has to mark an impairment loss. That impairment lowers their net income and their earnings per share, both gap and non-gap. So it doesn't matter if the price of Bitcoin rises, even if it went back to $60,000 before the end of the quarter, Tesla would still have to recognize the impairment. They only recognize gains if and when they sell for a gain. Ultimately, it doesn't matter too much. It's really just an accounting thing. It doesn't impact Tesla's cash flow at all. And most, probably all analysts will exclude that when looking at Tesla's financials. It's just something to be aware of as we go into the report. Anyway, a few weeks ago when Bitcoin hit a new low, I was estimating at that point that would cause Tesla to have to recognize maybe a $65 million impairment. With the new low today, I expect that number to increase now to an impairment of about $120 million or so for Q2. And there's still some time left in the quarter, so that could continue to increase. But it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Even with that level of impairment, Tesla should still be able to show profit, maybe even excluding regulatory credits despite that impairment. So as usual, we'll go through all my detailed forecasts there ahead of earnings, which should be in about a month. All right, next up here, a little bit of news from China. This was passed along by Jay in Shanghai. Tesla China is scheduling an event for June 23rd. So basically today in China to talk about something energy related. They've got some pictures here of a solar panel and a power wall and a couple of graphics here counting down to the event, which per translating this image, it looks like is for a project launch meeting. So Jay in Shanghai believes this will be the first Tesla solar and power wall deployment in China. Super exciting, and we'll see if any other news comes out of that tomorrow. A couple other quick notes while we're on the subject of China. Now we are, of course, about a week and a half out from quarter end. The wait times for the Model 3 and the Model Y are still showing as one to three weeks on the China Design Studio. So we've kind of been keeping an eye on that as it's one of our few clues for demand around some of the demand concerns this month and last month in China but no change there, so that is falling more to the side of demand being a concern in China right now. If accurate, I do expect that to be something that is short-term in nature, but certainly the market is focused on that, so we're going to continue to keep a close eye on it. I mean, certainly if you look at that one to three week wait time for the Model Y, it's very different than what we've seen play out with the Model Y here in the U.S. with really long wait times, and that's despite the fact that Shanghai Model Y production started much later than Fremont, only about six months now of production. So I know a lot of people have outright dismissed that article on China orders. I've cautioned against doing that, and I've yet to see anything that for sure invalidates that, though it's important to recognize that that is different than something confirming it. Just means to keep an open mind, let's wait and see how things unfold. Again, even if China demand is at a lower level right now, Tesla does still have other options, certainly increasing exports, one great option, and Tesla does have a lot of pricing levers that they can pull if they did want to. From one of Wu Wa's videos over the weekend, remember he does Shanghai flyovers, he does note with the video title that, quote, a large number of overseas versions of Tesla appeared in the parking area, end quote. If that is the case, that would be relatively unusual for the final month of quarter when Tesla generally is focusing on domestic deliveries, which allows them to maximize quarterly deliveries, and that has a lot of benefits to making the financials look as good as they can. So if they are indeed prepping vehicles for export right now with just a week, two weeks left in the quarter, 
that would not be the normal practice and would probably notch another tally on the side of reduced demand in China. So just trying to pass along the information as I see it and interpret it. Again, not something that I'm necessarily concerned about, but bears monitoring. Hopefully my thoughts on this have come through clearly. Tesla may not be alone experiencing a bit of rough water there in China. Reuters out with a report this morning that Volkswagen is having some trouble selling their ID4 vehicles, with sales reported to be about 1,400 units in April and about 1,200 units in May. Now, obviously, one of the first thoughts that comes to mind is, okay, well, maybe they have a production constraint. We know that these month-to-month -month delivery numbers are not really the most meaningful numbers sometimes, but what may be more concerning than those numbers are some other elements of this report. Reuters writes, quote, the sales fell far short of initial hopes, for people with knowledge of the matter said, and what some other automakers have achieved with early sales of flagship EV offerings in the world's largest auto market, end quote. Okay, it's still maybe no big deal, sales could fall short if there's not the production level to back their targeted sales, which they had previously said were somewhere around 50 to 60,000 vehicles this year. So about four to 5,000 a month versus the 1,400 and 1,200 that they did in April and May. But it does sound like it may not just be production. So they've got a quote here from one of those sources saying, quote, sales so far are behind our earlier expectations. We've had to dial down production plans for the ID4 again and again, end quote. They also added, quote, this is not healthy, but at the moment, customers are not coming to buy them, end quote. In a perfect example of a public relations team not really helping the overall tone of the article too much, Reuters did get a statement from VW. They say, quote, Volkswagen said in a statement to Reuters that ID sales in China were in line with expectations as it builds up production and a new sales network, adding it does not view Tesla's Model Y as a direct competitor for the ID4, which occupies a different vehicle type segment. It also said it was confident the two ID4 models would see sales growth and noted plans for three more ID models to be launched this year in China, end quote. So definitely an interesting time in the EV space overall and no difference there for China. We'll have to keep an eye on how and if the ID4 progresses over the next few months. That is where we'll leave it for today though. So as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, June 23rd episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.